everybody. In the last video, I covered how to pass the kite from one person to another, as it's a situation that can lead to accidents. It is also a technique used often by instructors to change the student, so it should be done in a non-stress way. If you missed this video, click on the upper corner to check it out. In today's video, I'll focus on land teaching as I often see people getting airborne, and the possibility of getting hurt is high when you fall on land. With this technique, you will make sure the kite is never going to pass the power zone, but still allow for the student to get full control of the kite. If you like these videos, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. It's super important to me. Also, it would be great to get some feedback on other topics that you would like to discuss. So use the comment section and let me know your thoughts. These techniques are taught in depth in the IKO instructor course. So if you're interested in becoming an instructor, check our instructor video and dates by clicking the video linked above. On this video, I'll show you a special instructor technique, fifth line instructor safety line. This is only to be used by instructors in order to make your land lesson safer. This doesn't work in water, neither it is needed. This is only if you are teaching on land and you want your student to discover the wind window and the deep power with safety while he has the control of the kite. It is also a useful technique if your beach is not that big and you want to control the kite by making sure it stays on one side of the wind window. For this technique to work the best, short lines should be used. Besides the obvious advantages of added safety and strong winds, this technique is also very effective in light wind condition if the instructor is skillful and can use it to correct the angle of the kite. As mentioned, you should be using short lines. I recommend 10 to 15 maximum. On the connection of the pump leash, attach another line. This line should be the same size or one meter shorter than the lines you have on the kite. As the arc of the kite depends on the size, you should adjust it for each of the kites. Easiest way is to put the bar downwind of the kite with the lines attached and then connect the safety line to the pump connection. Then check if the lines with the safety leash is slightly longer than the bar. The instructor should use a long leash and make sure never to hold the line. You should control the kite by holding onto the leash to get a feeling of the line. Basically, this extra line will act like a secondary wind window. So if the instructor is away from the student, a few meters, the flying possibility of the kite is reduced because it will only be able to move on the overlapping wind window of the student, plus the one from the instructor. If the student pilots the kite in an incorrect way, the kite will be stopped by the kite reaching the end of the wind window of the instructor. So the instructor should be proactive in moving to the correct location in order to control the student's ability to move the kite. He should allow him to move the kite at the edge of the wind window, but make sure that he doesn't change sides all the time or passes the power zone. If the student pilots the kite to the power zone, the instructor just needs to go upwind to shorten the wind window overlap, causing the kite to collapse. In light winds, when the kite is stalled and tends to go fall backwards, the instructor can give some tension to the safety line to get the kite to get the airflow going and come back to the edge of the wind window. Again, this is not for beginners, neither for riding, but it's a very useful tool for instructors to get the student to gain the necessary skills of piloting a four-line kite in complete safety as the kite will not pass the power zone. It also allows the student to get a feeling for the kite and the deep power movement as well as the steering. I also suggest you to make the student walk towards you while you keep the kite under control by moving in front of him in an upwind position. This way, the student will simulate riding. On a moment to change sides, the student should go slowly with the kite to 12 and deep power the kite by pushing the bar completely up. If the movement is correct, the instructor can get close to the student to allow the kite to change side. If the movement is not slow and correct, the instructor can abort the movement by moving backwards at any time. If it is correct, the instructor can go close to the student and then move away again. The movement is done in a V-shape, marking the upwind direction the student should take. In case the instructor needs to stop the kite, he just needs to move quickly upwind. That will make the kite fall the same way as if you had activated the fifth line safety. In case the beach is small, just make the fifth instructor line shorter and do not allow the student to pilot to the opposite side. If you are teaching alone, 
and you don't have an assistant, you ask the student not to pilot the kite while you put the kite on the edge of the wind window. When you are back next to him, he can then launch the kite with you controlling the wind window size so he can't pilot to the power zone. I hope this technique is beneficial to improve your teaching, making it safer and the evolution of your student faster. With it, the student can have a better control of the kite at the edge of the wind window before going to the water. Also, in light winds, the instructor can help the student to keep the kite at the edge of the wind window. Walking upwind helps with this too. The downside is that you will need a big beach and come back downwind from time to time. But it can save a lesson and make it productive for the student. This and other techniques are showed and learned to be applied in the IKO instructor course. You can find out more about these courses at the IKO website or by checking the IKO instructor's video on this channel linked on this top corner. Let me know if you know this technique and if you have used it before or any doubts you might have about it. I'm here to help you out. If you haven't subscribed to the videos, click here to subscribe. And if you want to check more videos, just click right here. See you on the next videos.